Well, good morning, ladies, and happy Easter. What a wonderful day. Jesus has risen. And because he's risen, we too will rise from the dead when our time comes. And it's just so wonderful to know. Could there be anything better than that? Oh, nothing in this life matters but that. So. If you don't know Jesus, just ask him into your heart. It's simply a matter of telling him that you're just, God, forgive my sins. And I believe in your son, Jesus Christ. And I believe that he did die for my sins. I accept that, Lord. I can't be good enough. I've tried and tried. I can't be good enough. Lord, it's all in you, and I trust in the blood of Jesus that he shed on that cross and his resurrection power. And I ask Jesus to come into my heart right now, Lord. Thank you, Father. And I will try my best with your help, Lord, to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Folks, if you did that, let me know. Oh, if you have any questions about salvation. Well, I've got to switch over now. Today. Today, we're going to talk about 13 things to look for in finding Mr. Right. Okay, and at the end of this, there's kind of a little, a little, that's a little surprise. Okay. Number one, you probably won't find Mr. Right in a bar. Try the grocery stores or church where your friends work or through a friend. It wasn't where your friends work, but where you work or through a friend. Sorry about that. If he tells you he is married, he's separated, or his wife doesn't understand him, he has trouble stamped on his forehead. If he tries to move in with you or wants to borrow money, be careful. He may be a con artist. Number four, if his family avoids him, maybe you should too. They know him better than you do. Check out his car. It should be clean, serviceable, and insured. Number six, if he has children. Decide if you want to marry them too because that is the way it'll be. And be aware that they are a direct link to his ex-wife forever. You don't need a man, number seven. You don't need a man to be complete, a complete woman. Boy, think about that one. I've been thinking about that one. Choose the man. Don't let him choose you. Be selective. No one has the power to make you happier than the right man or more miserable than the wrong man. Oh, so good. Number eight, find someone who laughs at the same things you do. A shared sense of humor will make good times better and bad times less difficult. Number nine, if you want children and plan to stay home and raise them, choose a man with skills and education that will put him in a high salary category. It's just common sense. Number 10, if you want a career, don't marry a man who hates his job. He will resent the time and attention you give to yours. Number 11, two red flags. Does he have a short fuse and a hot temper? Is he hung up on his mother? These are two negatives that inevitably get worse after marriage. Both can be disastrous. Number 12, don't get married because you're afraid to be alone. Mm. 
No wife is more alone than one whose husband pays no attention to her. Number 13. No matter how wonderful his other qualities may be, do not marry a man who has threatened, hit, or humiliated you. In fact, don't go out with him a second time. Such a man is hazardous to your emotional and physical health and should be avoided like the plague. And number 14, pay attention to how he treats his mother. Chances are good he'll treat you the same. Now, what I was going to tell you is this article, this was an article I read this from. <laughs> this is an old, old article. I don't know, I don't know why I even happened to cut this out. It was written by Ann Landers. She started writing columns in 1955. Uh, I remember her being in the Times. It, well, she was in 10,000 different papers. But I remember her being in the Times, and I just looked so forward to reading her columns. They had so much common sense in them. Uh, actually, Ann Landers, her, her uh, real name was Pauline. And she had a sister by the name of Esther. They were Jewish ladies. Uh, the Sun-Times didn't want Esther, her sister Esther, uh, helping her with answering the questions or having any part of it. They just, they wanted uh, Pauline, who was Anne, called herself Anne. And so that's what they had been doing, kind of the two of them answering questions. So... She had to put her sister out of the picture. Well, her sister got her own column. Now, her sister became Abby. And a lot of you ladies remember it was Dear Abby. Not sure what paper she wrote in, but Ann Landers was the original one, the first sister that was doing this. So there's Ann Landers, and so there's Dear, and then Abby, Ann and Abby. Um, there was a feud between them because of this, but from what I was reading, it didn't last. It didn't last forever. It was a short feud, but understandable. And as far as looking for a guy, a lot of time I keep hearing women say, you know, that all the lovely guys are all taken. And it's not, True, it's just that you're too busy sometimes trying to find the wrong guy. Because we're trying to, re sometimes we're trying to replace also our husband or our boyfriend. And, and we want somebody just like them, but you're never going to find anybody like them. And sometimes you don't want to. So you're just going to find somebody new. So it might quit looking for the same exact thing again because it's really going to, you might miss a really good guy by doing that. Okay. And I have a scripture for you. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 to 9. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We're not going to get destroyed, ladies, no matter what happens in our life. Don't give anybody that power. Nobody has that power. And you're never alone. We have Jesus in us. We have the Trinity in us. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry I touched my mic here. So God bless all of you. Have a wonderful Easter. I'm going to be, I was invited down the street to my <laughs> little neighbor lady. She's 86. Her daughter is in her 60s, and both of them are widowed too. I've been widowed for three months. So I just wish all of you a happy Easter and a very happy life. Bye now. Love all of you. Here's a big hug for you.